While the Supreme Court recently ruled 6-3 that workers can't be fired for LGBTQ status, at the same time, the Trump administration rolled back an Obama-era rule that protected LGBTQ patients, specifically trans folks, from discrimination when it comes to health care and health insurance. Meaning, regardless of whether someone is employed or not, they can be denied health care services. The Trump administration's reversal of the rule was announced on the fourth anniversary of a mass shooting that took place at a gay nightclub called Pulse, where 49 people were killed. Behind that push to make it easier to discriminate against a community of our fellow citizens during a pandemic, and from now on, is a man named Roger Severino. I'm actress Shakina Nafak, and this is the story of Roger Severino. We don't want the government to treat people of religious faith as outsiders. That's Roger Severino, the devout Catholic conservative mastermind behind the Trump administration's effort to treat trans Americans as outsiders, denying them federal recognition and civil rights protections. Unfortunately, the world is a very dangerous place for people of faith. Severino was born sometime in the mid-70s to Colombian immigrants and grew up in Los Angeles. Growing up in a Spanish-speaking family, Severino faced a ton of discrimination for something he couldn't help. As a kid, he was often the victim of racism. And when he was attending high school, he says his teachers were skeptical that a Latino kid could take honors classes, which he did. Severino overcame this unfortunate bigotry and went on to Harvard School of Law, graduating in 2002 with a JD. I did experience discrimination as a child, and that leaves a lasting impression, he said, in the midst of setting up what was seemingly a trans discrimination task force. From Harvard, Severino got right to on-the-job work experience making LGBTQ plus Americans lives harder. Severino worked as a legal counsel for the Beckett Fund, a law firm that focuses on religious liberty. At the firm, he served as one of the main lawyers in a case he won that banned same-sex couples from marrying in Maryland. In a 2006 op-ed he wrote in the Philadelphia Inquirer, Severino said the concept live and let live doesn't apply to gay rights and religious beliefs. And he's since made it his life's mission to not let live. The Atlantic notes what the Beckett Fund eventually came to be after Severino left. Quote, the religious liberty law firm is best known for its victories in Burwell versus Hobby Lobby and the Little Sisters of the Poor versus Burwell. Cases litigated after Severino's tenure that challenged Obamacare's contraceptive mandate on religious grounds. Severino spent nearly five years at the law firm that once argued that companies, like people, can have religious rights and use those religious rights to discriminate against Americans. After some time with the Department of Justice, Severino went on to work as the director of the DeVos Center for Religion and Civil Society at the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation is a conservative think tank, and the branch Severino worked for was funded by Michigan's finest, the DeVos family. I would imagine that there's probably a gun in the school to protect from potential grizzlies. In addition to constantly arguing against legalizing same-sex marriage, Severino was one of the biggest critics of the Obama administration's ruling on Section 1557 of the Affordable Care Act, which bans discrimination against trans Americans. In a 2016 Heritage Foundation report, Severino co-wrote an article about how the Affordable Care Act's gender identity mandate would interfere with doctors' religious beliefs, of which they chose to believe. Quote, these regulations propose to penalize medical professionals and healthcare organizations that, as a matter of faith, moral conviction, or professional medical judgment, believe that maleness and femaleness are biological realities to be respected and affirmed, not altered or treated as diseases. So why did this guy tap Severino? As your president, I will do everything in my power to protect our LGBTQ citizens from the violence and oppression of a hateful foreign ideology. Believe me. Because Severino's hateful ideology is domestic. And who cares about that? Trump himself has rescinded the Obama administration's policy allowing trans students to use the bathroom of their choice. And he's attempted to ban trans Americans from serving their country in the military. Trump, who dodged the draft, is now making calls on who gets to join. His administration even tried to discharge trans Americans already serving. And in May, Trump signed an executive order launching a new faith-based initiative. Trump called the order another historic action to promote religious freedom. And he said it will help ensure that faith-based organizations have equal access to government funding and the equal right to exercise their deeply held beliefs. As the Daily Beast notes, if those last three words, deeply held beliefs, sound familiar, it's because they are often used to justify anti-LGBT legislation in the name of religious freedom. Religious liberty is our first freedom and our birthright. 
And there's two important concepts there. First, is that our first freedom. It has preeminence among our liberties. And this makes a lot of sense. It even comes before the freedom of speech. Trump quietly tapped Severino as the director of the Office for Civil Rights at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in March of 2017. And ever since he took the post, the HHS, ostensibly responsible for the health and well-being of all Americans, has transformed into a hub for pro-life, anti-LGBTQ, devout Christians. Severino, who is supposed to be cracking down on discrimination, is instead enabling it. In a serious position of power, what used to just be ideology now has the potential of becoming policy. He's overseeing the administration's effort to define trans people out of existence, as the New York Times puts it. According to a memo seen by the New York Times, the HHS proposed that, quote, sex means a person's status as male or female based on immutable biological traits, identifiable by or before birth. The sex listed on a person's birth certificate as originally issued shall constitute definitive proof of a person's sex unless rebutted by reliable genetic evidence. This new proposed definition goes against what decades of science have shown us and also ignores the already medically subscribed to consensus on sex, that it goes beyond just what your classification is on your birth certificate, genitals, or the chromosomal makeup of your body. Defining gender as biological and defined at birth would impact an estimated 1.4 million Americans. If the HHS is successful in its effort to create an outcast group of people in America, this new policy could strip away the few protections trans Americans have been granted. It could permit health care providers to refuse to work with patients. Trans Americans could be denied jobs, housing, and schools could even feel more empowered to discriminate against trans children. In one recent incident, a 10-year-old trans girl was left out of the active shooter drill at her school because teachers didn't allow her in the male or female locker rooms. So she huddled vulnerably in the gym by herself. When she came home to her mother, she said, if there had been an active shooter, I would have been the first to go. If legislation is to move forward, things like this will become far more frequent. Trans Americans reportedly experience higher rates of depression than the general U.S. population due to this misunderstanding. If a policy is put in place, what has already been a life filled with discrimination and violence through verbal and physical abuse will seemingly get even more difficult. Severino is married to Carrie Severino, who runs the Judicial Crisis Network. It's a group that reportedly spent millions of dollars in support of Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation. Yes, we drank beer. I liked beer. So if erasing a whole group of people does find its way to the Supreme Court, the outcome is obvious. So much of the issues that are being debated will ultimately, ultimately be resolved, for better or for worse, by the United States Supreme Court. Hey, thanks for watching Who Is? Did you know we have a podcast now too? On Who Is? The podcast? I'll dive deep into the fascinating lives of the people who run things, whose decisions impact every aspect of our lives. How did they get where they are today? And knowing that, what might they do next? From politicians to the ultra-rich to military contractors and monarchs and media moguls, I'll introduce you to the reporters and experts who know these real-life world molders best sharp-eyed observers and confidants who observe our subjects as they make the decisions that define our everyday lives. To see more, hit the link or search Who Is on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more of the video series you know and love, be sure to check out the Snapchat versions and our series playlists on YouTube and Facebook.